So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Mohammed Qasim Bhatti. Um, I'm a final year medical student at the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, stationed in Bahrain. And today I'm going to talk about COVID-19 and Guillain-Barré syndrome. So let's get started. So here's the table of contents. I'm going to introduce the presentation with a case and dive in a bit on the history of, the, of Guillain-Barré syndrome, the epidemiology, the etiology, the pathogenesis, certain clinical features, the diagnostics, treatment, um, and what the current literature is on, uh, on COVID-19 and GBS, followed by the conclusion. So let's get started with the case. So this was a case that I had encountered actually here uh, in uh, my pediatric rotation. Um, so a 16 year old female presented to the pediatric neurology outpatient department with bilateral lower limb weakness and tingling for two days. Um, she complained of losing balance occasionally and lower back pain. She says this pain is five out of 10 dull in character radiating downwards bilaterally. She had tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 four weeks ago with primarily developing a fever, loss of sense of smell, and a continuous cough. Reporting in progress. Um, her, sy her symptoms resolved within one week. Uh, past medical history and past surgical history was not significant. She's in 10th grade uh, attending school virtually. So on physical examination, so first she, she's widely stable. Her respiratory rate is um, a normal temperature is normal, blood pressure, heart rate, and auto saturation is all normal. Um, so on physical exam, there was a lower limb weakness bilaterally. Motor examination revealed four out of five muscle strength in the lower limbs and areflexia. Sensation and coordinated coordination is intact. Upper limb, uh, proximal, and distal muscles have normal tone, power coordination, and sensation. Proprioception is uh, normal. Cranial nerve examination was normal. Uh, and there were no bulb burst signs as well. So in this case, as you can see, it's primarily affecting the lower limbs and is progressive and is rapidly progressive and um, is at the moment localized uh, in the lower limbs. So what are our differentials? Um, in this case, it's pretty straightforward, but um, so, but certain some other differentials could be transverse myelitis, but it Classically, if uh, is asymmetric, and you would also see upper motor neuron signs as well. Myasthenia gra gravis um, is usually due to, um, you'll see uh, fatigability, which is characteristic. Lambert and Eaton is uh, slowly progressive botulism. Uh, there's nothing in her history that might suggest uh, a botulism infection. Also, she is fully vaccinated. Um, Tick-borne paralysis, again, is not as uh, pertinent due to her history. So the investigations that were done in the hospital, um, CBC revealed mild lymphopenia, CRP and ESR was, were mildly elevated. Her CRP, I believe, was 11. Um, ESR was very slightly elevated. UNE was normal. Uh, LFTs were within reference range. Nerve conduction studies revealed decreased velocity in the tibial and perineal nerves. Anti-gangliocyte antibodies were negative. I'm going to go into the specific antibodies later in this presentation. Um, LP showed um, CSF elevated CSF protein with lymphocytic uh, with no lymphocytic plyocytosis, which is characteristic for um, Guillain-Barré syndrome, as we are all aware that you see uh, albuminocytologic uh, dissociation. Serology for Campylobacter in this case was not not done, and her. Um, um, PCR was negative for uh, SARS-CoV-2. Pulmonary function tests at the moment were normal. So she was uh, admitted as an inpatient for observation uh, because we want to monitor her cardiac and respiratory function as in very rare cases, it can rapidly progress and can lead to dysautonomia. Um, so she, but in her case, fortunately, she received supportive care and uh, IVIG, 400 mg per kg per day for five days, and uh, she recovered. 
So let's dive into a bit of the history of Guillain-Barré syndrome. So Guillain-Barré syndrome, symptoms similar to Guillain-Barré, specifically ascending paralysis, were first described by Jean Laundry in uh, uh, France. He's a French physician and he had documented 10 cases of a similar symptomatology. Um, but the term Guillain-Barré was not coined at that time. Um, during the World War I, World War I so um, Dr. Guillain and Dr. Barré, they were uh, serving in, in the army and they had noticed and noted cases of soldiers becoming partially paralyzed. Um, but the classic polyradicular poly neuropathy and CSF findings were first described in 1916 by Dr. Guillain and Dr. Barré. And over the years, further cases of the illness were documented throughout the early uh, 20th century. But it's important to keep in mind that this um, condition sort of um, was um, the first similar cases were actually elucidated early in the 19th century. So what is Guillain-Barré uh, syndrome? Essentially, it's an acute inflammatory demyelinating polyradiculopathy following an infection, and it's an autoinflammatory reaction. It's characterized by its rapidly progressive course of ascending weakness and paralysis symmetrically. Epidemiology, its incidence is one in 100,000 per population. Males are more commonly affected than females, and children are less commonly affected. Prevalence of various subtypes vary geographically. There are certain subtypes that are really common in the US and Europe, which is um, um, AIDP, acute inflammatory demyelinating uh, polyneuropathy. And acute motor axonal neuropathy is also uh, a very common subtype, but it, its prevalence varies uh, 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 regionally. So what are the common associated pathogens? Uh, so Guillain-Barré syndrome has been re reported following a Campylobacter jejuni infection, um, Epstein-Barr virus, CMV influenza, the Zika virus, which is endemic at the one point in uh, uh, South America, um, mycoplasma pneumonia, and most currently SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19. And some cases have also been reported post-vaccination um, following the seasonal flu vaccines as well. And um, interestingly, I think uh, the CDC also mentioned it, mentions it as, a, uh, as a rare reaction following the flu shot. So let's dive into the pathophysiology. Um, Still, the pathophysiology is not fully understood for other associated um, infections, but here um, this focuses on um, um, the pathogenesis following a, a Campylobacter jejuni infection. So as you can see in this figure, um, you, uh, following a C. jejuni infection, your body triggers a immune, uh, immune response, which is primarily a humoral immune response and creates uh, antibodies against um, the lipo, uh, the lipo oligosaccharides in the outer membrane of the C. jejuni bacteria. But these, um, uh, are, these antibodies are, are also cross-reactive against um, uh, ganglioside proteins, which are part of the peripheral nerve sheath in, uh, uh, and, uh, and are part of the Schwann cells that myelinate the peripheral, peripheral nerves. So you get a cross-reaction and um, Certain um, antibodies that are associated with this, uh, this cross-reaction is anti-GM1, uh, anti-GD1A, uh, and I'm going to go into the specific antibodies, the specific uh, anti-ganglioside antibodies that are associated with certain subtypes of uh, GBS. So here you can see that these cross-reactive antibodies go in your peripheral nerves, are uh, at the node of Ranvier and are able to fix complement proteins and trigger a uh, complement mediated uh, lysis, which leads to destruction of the peripheral nerves uh, through the membrane attack complex. Um, interestingly, you know, in, we still uh, do not, uh, we're not sure of which uh, anti, uh, antibodies are associated with COVID-19, but uh, hopefully further research would uh, unveil that. 
So certain clinical features, um, you see rapidly progressive ascending paralysis, distal paresthesias and limb weakness that can pro progress proximally, sensory loss, hypo or areflexia, dysautonomia, cranial nerve deficits. So dysautonomia can happen in uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome. Um, you can get uh, orthostatic hypotension, you can get um, your bladder uh, incontinence problems, you can also get certain arrhythmias as well. And cranial nerve deficits, uh, it's, uh, you can also see facial nerve uh, paralysis as well as bulbar signs as well. So here's the diagnostic criteria, uh, which was uh, coined by the National Institute of Neurologic Disorders and Stroke. And this diagnostic criteria was later modified uh, in a further review uh, paper um, to, for, so to make it like more easily um, to improve the readability. So these are the features that are required for the diagnosis. Um, progressive bilateral weakness of arms and legs, initially only legs may be involved. Absent or decreased uh, tendon reflex in effect, uh, reflexes and effective li affected limbs. So our patient, as I uh, mentioned in the beginning, had absent uh, tendon reflexes and had bilateral weakness in her legs. Uh, features that strongly support the diagnosis. It's a progressive phase, lasts from day um, from you know till four, like from days to four weeks, and it's relatively symmetrical, autonomic dysfunction, cranial nerve involvement, all the clinical features that I had mentioned before. Certain um, features that might cast a doubt at the diagnosis would be lymphocytic plyosotosis on CSF um, the, uh, and um, respiratory dysfunction, sensory signs or fever at onset, certain things that might point to a different diagnosis. So here are the variants of uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome. Um, so as you can see, I'd mentioned before in the presentation as well that um, acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy and acute uh, motor axonal neuropathy are the two most common types, uh, two most common types of GBS. And the main clinical features of AIDP are sensory motor, uh, uh, often combined cranial nerve deficits and uh, frequent autonomic dysfunction. Um, you see demyelinating polyneuropathy and the antibodies are variable in this case. And the treatment usually is IVIG. Acute motor axonal neuropathy, it's a pure motor GBS. Sensory nerves are usually spared. Cranial nerves are rarely affected. And um, these are the antibodies that are usually positive uh, with acute motor axonal neuropathy, GM1A, GM1B, GD1A, and GAINAC. You also have certain rare subtypes such as acute motor sensory axonal neuropathy, pharyngeal, cervical, uh, brachial vein, and Miller-Fisher syndrome. Miller-Fisher syndrome is sort of unique um, in which you can get ataxia, ophthalmoplegia, areflexia. And um, it's uh, usually the CSF findings are <laughs> like, are, sorry, nerve conduction findings are usually normal in most patients, but uh, even, and you might see discrete changes. And the antibodies are sort of different as well. Uh, GQ1B and GT1A uh, for Miller-Fisher Miller -Fisher syndrome. So the treatment and prognosis of Guillain-Barre syndrome. Um, the treatment, uh, so studies have shown that plasma exchange or IVIG, both are equally effective. So, and it is the first line with supportive care. And you wanna assess if the patient is ambulatory and if they have any symptoms of dysautonomia. If they do have any symptoms of dysautonomia, you wanna in, uh, initiate supportive management um, if you want to monitor their respiratory and cardiac function, you, the patients might need to be intubated and uh, they might need certain su other supportive care as well. Um, prognosis, 70% of patients have a good prognosis and certain patients can develop co complications such as respiratory failure and cardiac arrhythmias, but um, it's relatively rare. And usually, uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome carries a good prognosis. So this is what you, uh, what I had found in the literature so far for COVID-19 and Guillain-Barre. So this was an article um, 
uh, this was actually a correspondence that uh, a few doctors in Italy had uh, um, published in uh, the New England Journal of Medicine in which they had examined five patients uh, who had developed Guillain-Barre syndrome following a COVID-19 infection. And uh, there has been uh, a review of uh, current case reports as well, in which uh, 48 patients were, 48 cases of Guillain-Barre were uh, reviewed and were found to be associated with uh, COVID-19 infection. However, um, so in conclusion, you would want, want to say the G. GBS is associated, is associated with SARS-CoV-2, and it usually resembles the classical forms according to the current literature. Uh, it usually is associated with a very similar sort of uh, clinical presentation uh, currently. Uh, it's important that neurologists are aware of this rare but significant diagnosis. Um, at present, most literature consists of case series and uh, case reports but you would want to do long-term studies to thoroughly assess a causal relationship. And I feel like there's, this is a very interesting area for research and um, especially during the, the, the pandemic, it's very important currently as well because um, you would want to have a complete picture and how to manage these patients as well. So um, these are my references and uh, thank you so much for listening.